Last time on Shadow Peaks, the face leading towards the Egghead incident got revealed, explaining how Vegapunk and a few of his satellites managed to get away from the island before the Buster Call arrived, and all that without anyone noticing. However, before they left, they prepared a couple of surprises for the world government. To not give them access to the scientific firepower, they rigged the entire island to explode, erasing it completely from the world. But that wasn't everything. With the help of their double agent Sussy, they also overwhelmed the CP0 agents Luchi and Kaku and gave them a quick death. Using their technology one last time on Eke, they created two perfect clones, one for each of the world government agents. Now the punks have three agents secretly working for them in the highest ranked Cypher Pole subdivision. As they made themselves on the way to the Revolutionary Army's base, they ordered their clone warriors to fake fight against the Seraphim. This battle lasted so long that it was still ongoing when the Buster Call arrived. At first, Kizaru had a conflicted face on him. After all, he and Vegapunk are old friends. But when he noticed that the V record of the old scientist pointed in a completely different direction, he is quite relieved. The Yellow Monkey Admiral just follows orders, even if it meant he had to kill a friend of his. It's his job and that's where it ends. This time though, the command was specifically to kill Vegapunk and the satellites on Egghead Island. As they are not on this island anymore, it is simply impossible to achieve this mission. One after the other, the marine and world government vessels arrive at the coast of the future island. A few talented commanders, every vice admiral and Kizaru himself can feel the battle going on in the island. So they quickly rush towards the position of their previously sent agents. Luchi and Kaku are in the hybrid zone forms, and black clouds form a semicircle around their back, showing off that they are awakened devil food users. Dusty remains in her normal human form, offering backup for the two frontline fighters with sneak attacks when the opportunity shows itself. All three world government agents are heavily injured, blood is flowing over their skin, and on the ground puddles of blood are spread over a very wide range. All of this damage is just to make this whole confrontation feel more real, otherwise seasoned fighters could look through their ploy quite easily. No one present is capable of stopping the Seraphims without at least knocking them out, but that also isn't easy. Destroyed and in a green puddle of blood, the marine soldiers can find S Crocodile, S Bear, S Shark and also S Flamingo, four of the clones that Vegapunk called the highest echelon of science or sometimes even the strongest form of humanity have already been destroyed. Only S-Hawk, S-Snake and s Bat remain. If they decided to destroy specifically the ones with the highest potential, it would have appeared suspicious and that resulted in this very outcome. Kizaru takes in the situation at light speed and quickly gives out orders. He may appear lazy most of the time, but when it comes to work, he performs at the highest efficiency. Oh, the Vice Admirals have the highest speed and don't use Devil Fruits, grab the Sea Stone handcuffs. Everyone else, assist them in putting the handcuffs on the Seraphim. Medics, take care of the CP0 agents. These soldiers have fought together for years, some even for decades. Their movements are well coordinated and with the stamina of the young warlord clones already being depleted, it is a quick job done. Both marine and world government members spread out to search the island for Vegapunk or any clues where he might have gone. At the same time, the Seraphim, Luchi, Kaku and Stasi are being carried away from the islands. One vice admiral is questioning the top tier agents for information. Thank you for your work. Do you have any clues on where the criminals could have hidden themselves? So far everything is going according to plan and thus Luchi speaks up for the crew. You really could have arrived faster. But what can I expect from the Marines, right? You are just a bunch of scrubs. The relationship between Cypherpole and the Marines isn't the best. Often the world government agents think of themselves as something better and more valuable, Rob Lucci being one of these cases. A vein appears on the forehead of the Vice Admiral out of anger, but he deals with it, as he just wants to capture the villains to keep the world safe. Patient justice is his personal way. We can only assume that Vegapunk already escaped from the island because of your late arrival. We had our hands full of the Seraphim, so now do your job. This was everything the high ranking Marine needed to hear. He leaves the room of the injured and starts patiently thinking about the situation. Hmm. If Vegapunk really escaped, our mission is over. We secured three of the Seraphim and none of the CP0 agents die either. That is a relatively positive outcome. 
his thoughts are coming together fluidly, putting all the information together like puzzle pieces. But something is missing. Would a genius criminal scientist see just keep like this? And then it clicks for the Vice Admiral. He instantly starts running to the communication center of the battleship and begins an emergency announcement in a hasty voice. All Marine and World Government soldiers evacuate from Atkins. This is a trap created by Vegapunk. He already left the island. We need to leave this place now. Patience is the key to success. That is what he always says to himself. But now he has to act in the opposite way. He could be wrong and get punished for his actions. And yet his gut tells him that this is exactly what he needs to do. In orderly fashion, all soldiers return to their respective ships and sail away from the future islands. Some other vice admirals confront the practice now of patient justice, threatening him for calling the mission off. Meanwhile, Kizaru just washes. Hours pass and Eckhead has left their field of view already. The anger towards the person who forced them all to leave steadily increases still. What if Vegapunk actually still was on the island? And it was just the wrong decision to stop the search. Their fleet admiral will personally end all of their lives, even though it was just a decision of one vice admiral. But then it happens. The waves grow rougher and rougher. The cloudy sky turns clear for a moment before dark and ominous clouds take over quickly. And finally, with a sound loud enough to be heard all over the new world, an explosion happens. The ticking time bomb, previously known as Eke, has exploded. This explosion can be seen by all the soldiers, even though the island already left their eyesight. But that's not everything. The patient vice admiral shouts with all of his might, TAKE COVER! With a delay, the force of the explosion reaches the warship scattered for the buster call. Planks get ripped apart, windows shatter, mass destruction ensues. Because of the quick judgment of the vice admiral, no one was injured badly. What he didn't expect was that this was just the beginning. It was just the prelude of something bigger. Nobody expects a select few of the world know of the existence of the Mother Flame. But this energy source on Eckhead is now also about to perform a destructive feat like no other. Luckily, the first showcase sent the ships multiple kilometers further away from the explosion point of origin. No one dared to get out of the inside of their ships, but the Vice Admiral who started all of this went out to look for the people who didn't make it in time. By his own estimations, he has at most a minute before the Big Bang hits, but he doesn't regret his decision. Multiple people didn't get inside before the first shockwave hit. As a marine, it is his job to save others, civilians and also his comrades. 10 seconds before the mother flame explosion reached them, he heard a quiet help coming from the watchtower. This is no time to hesitate, he thought to himself, before gaboying up there. In the crow's nest, he finds a young man, barely old enough to join the marines. He doesn't look injured, but his legs have given out from fear. Don't worry, I will bring you down, is what the vice admiral tells the recruits, but it's already too late to actually get to safety. Putting himself in front of the boy, he takes the full force of the explosion's shockwave with his body. Tekai, Am and Haki, and pure guts. He grinds his teeth, not thinking about himself, but just about the safety of the young recruits. On this day, 100,000 people lost their lives, one of them being the patient Vice Admiral. Unnecessary deaths that the world government could have avoided if their leaders weren't the Celestial Dragons. But with those deaths, others swore to change the world and make it a better place. One of those people was the boy that got saved last second. What it entails to actually change the world and make it a better place will however be much more complicated than he could have ever anticipated. And this is the end of today's episode of Shadow Peace. I hope you enjoyed it and rest in peace to the patient Vice Admiral. He really was what a marine should be in his world. But now he's done. He was just a side character for the singular episode but maybe you still felt some emotions for him. For now that is all from me for today. All that's left to be said is stay happy, stay healthy and most importantly stay cultured. Pyro out. Bye.